Hey guys, how are you? Um, I'm sure everybody's got the first or the same first question to start. So um, kind of a crazy past couple days for you guys. How did uh, you go about scheduling Tennessee? And if you want to comment on how that worked. Yeah, uh, number one, a lot of credit goes to uh, Nate Tomlinson on our end, uh, who does our scheduling. And then obviously King, Kim English on Tennessee's end, who uh, worked for us a couple of years ago and, and is familiar with our program. And obviously he and Nate are good friends from having played against each other in the, in the old Big 8 or Big 12, I should say. I'm dating myself, Big 12. Um, but those two guys really put it together once, you know, Tennessee had a lot of cancellations. They had a game on Wednesday night uh, that was canceled. They were looking for a game. We obviously lost our Colorado State game. We, you know, we had Mines as kind of a backup and and we, I would have liked to play Mines. They're, they're a quality team and, you know, right up the road. But when the Tennessee opportunity came, it just was, it was too good of an opportunity for our guys to pass up. And I, I you know, when it comes to scheduling this year, I, my, my biggest thing is I'm going to do everything within my power. We talk to our players a lot about controlling what you can control. And from my standpoint as a coach, I, I'm going to try my best to get them 27 games. You know, that's what the NCAA allows. And you know, a guy like McKinley Wright comes back for senior year. we got four other seniors. They deserve to play games in terms of what they've done and sacrifices they've made and the hard work they've put in. And I, I want to provide that. And I know Rick George and our administration is is behind that as well, and uh, so that's what we tried to do. And, and the Tennessee game worked out. Two two quality opponents, and what an opportunity! Okay, we'll start with Pat Rooney. Coach, just uh, X's and O's wise, what's been the challenge getting ready for this one? Obviously, Tennessee, uh, you know, incredibly talented team, picked to win the SEC, and. Uh, Short notice uh, and a lot of talented guys over there. And, yeah, but on the other hand, they haven't played yet. Yeah, and, and Pat, you know, it's funny. I, when I left for practice Saturday morning, I told my wife, uh, you know, it feels like the NCAA tournament. You know, we just got the game. You know, usually you get that game on Selection Sunday, you know, and you, you find out, well, on Wednesday you're going to play this team. And and you, you go into kind of scramble mode and you, get, you, you, you start looking at film and, and, and doing a scouting report, figure out what you need to work on. Well, I felt the same way until I got to the office and said, well, there's no film to look at. They haven't played a game and they got four new players, you know? So uh, Coach Roan is a veteran. He, he, he's he got the scout. You know, he looked at obviously some of the actions that they ran last year. Uh, Rick Barnes has been around for a long, long time. Um, so we're, we try to be as best to prepare for what we think they're going to run offensively, what they we think they're going to do defensively, and then obviously their personnel. Uh, the great thing about the internet, you know, uh, is it used to be with a freshman or a, a, a transfer or something, you know, you didn't have film on them. Well, now we can go to the film and we got film on everybody that they that is on their team. Now they may not, may not be in a Tennessee uniform, but we can at least see what they've done and and uh, get some information on them. But yeah, it'll be one of those, it'll be a lot like South Dakota, a lot like K-State in that we don't have a real full picture of what Tennessee's all about, but they've only got two games on us as well. So, but Coach English does have the inside track in terms of knowing our our terminology and one of the, some of the things we like to do, but, you know, that's that's okay. Um, Rod Mackey. Yeah, Ted, um, big picture-wise, you guys playing well. Um Carl's got the, the football team undefeated with all the headaches and all the, the challenges you guys have had this year. How proud are you right now, this university, and what's going on around there? The women's team playing well as well. Yeah, Rod, no, I, I mean, obviously our football team just cracked the top 25, you know, uh, uh, this week, which is great news. Uh, really proud of Coach Durrell and his staff and, and, and those players and, and all the things that they've been through. You know, some of those guys are on their third coach in three years, and so – yeah, the, the job that they've done, uh, you know, J.R. Payne does a ter terrific job. And you know what? We've got a lot of other really good coaches in this department who don't have the opportunity to, uh, you know, compete right now. And so I think it's incum incumbent upon men's and women's basketball as well as a football team to, you know, represent everybody and, and with the way we play and hopefully the success we can have. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait till it gets back to normal. Uh, don't know when that's going to be, but really, really proud. I think it, it speaks to the leadership of Rick George 
and of Phil DeStefano on our campus to uh, provide these opportunities for these young men and women to compete. And hopefully that will continue. Justin Guerrero. Hey coach, just a quick follow on the, uh, the, the scheduling of this Tennessee game. Um, is this going to be a, a home and home? Uh, were you able to get anything in principle from Tennessee that, that could have them in Boulder in the next season or so? Yeah, so it's actually, it's actually going to be a three game series. Um, we're going to, we're going to, uh, they'll, they'll return to Boulder next year. And then we're going to play them in Nashville, uh, the year after. And, uh, there's some considerations involved. I'm, I won't get into all the details, but, um, again, to, to get a, a quality program like Tennessee on the schedule for this year and in future years gives our players something to look forward to. It's you know, the hardest thing at Colorado. Um, you know, you guys that, that follow our program know, uh, number one, recruiting is, is always a challenge, but. We, we've, we've figured out a way to kind of figure that out and get good players in here. Um, we don't have McDonald's All-Americans players like, like, uh, like Tennessee's got a couple on their roster, but we've got good players. But the second hardest thing to do is schedule in, in Boulder and get teams to come to Boulder. So when we had that opportunity, we just felt like we had to jump on it. And, and going back to Nashville, great city, um, gives, a, gives our chance, a chance to get into a different part of the country a uh, different time zone and show what we're all about. Um, next up, Hart Fasani. Hey, Coach. You mentioned uh, the football team being in the top 25 this week. Obviously, y'all spent some time in the top 25 last year as well. Um, and going in with Tennessee, they are ranked in the top 25, even though they haven't played a game. If you guys uh, can get the win tomorrow, do you think that y'all have done enough to be considered for top 25 consideration this year? Well, Hart, you know, that's the one. I, always, I say this all the time. That's why I love coaching college basketball rather than coach, call, co coaching college football is that, you know, the top 25 really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot in, in basketball. I think it means a little bit more in football just because of bowl games and implications of postseason play. Um, obviously, being in the top 25 is, is, is nice. It's nice for your, your program and recognition. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, you got to play your way into the NCAA tournament or play your way out of it. And usually if you're in the top 25, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty much a lock for the tournament. But I don't really worry about that a whole lot, to be honest with you. So uh, we're just going to go try to compete our tails off against Tennessee and give ourselves a chance. And, you know, if we're able to win that game, great. If, if, if we don't, you know, we're going to use it as a great learning opportunity. And, and, and I'm sure Tennessee is going to do the same thing. So two quality opponents this early, but, you know, we spent 13 weeks, I think, in the top 25 last, last year, and uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't do you any good unless you're able to uh, turn that into postseason play. Uh, we'll go to Jimmy Hames. Hey, Coach, um, how quickly did this game with Tennessee come together? Jimmy, uh, it was pretty quick. I mean, I, I, you know, I go back to the timeline. I know I started uh, having serious discussions on Friday. Um, and then Saturday morning is kind of when it got done. Now, I mentioned Kim English. I mentioned Nate Tomlinson. I think they may have started talking about it a week ago, <laughs> maybe a month ago. But, uh, and you'd have to ask Rick. I mean, I don't, uh, Rick got involved. I know he was on the phone on Saturday morning, uh, kind of, hammering out some of the details but but uh it was it was relatively quick I'll tell you that I mean it was kind of the assistant coaches talking and 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 putting things together and then and then uh it it, it needed obviously in a situation like this Jimmy it's got to make sense for both programs I'm, I'm glad it made sense for Tennessee I know it made sense for us and uh so here we are also what do you remember about your time at Tennessee <laughs> well I remember I used to have hair back then Jimmy uh I I remember that our first son, Jack, was born in Knoxville. Um, I remember that was 22 years ago. I remember that everybody in Knoxville at the time were, were, was asking us if we were going to name him uh, Peyton uh, because Peyton Manning was a senior and he was the, the big man on campus. Um, but I had, I, you know, I was only there for a year, but I had great memories of Knoxville and, and uh, you know, great university and, you know, Pat Summit was there. I got a chance to know her and, uh, and just uh, great, great people. And uh, I'll be anxious to see who's still around. I, I know our, our trainer, Chad Newman, is still there. I look forward yeah, to right. seeing him. And there's a few other administrators. I don't know if they're still around or not. But, uh, um, yeah, great, great times. And, and I've got a lot of respect for the University of Tennessee and obviously the, 
the fans in Knoxville. That's the one thing I probably remember uh, as well as anything at Rocky Top. So lots of memories. And so why didn't you name your son Peyton? <laughs> well, um, uh, I, uh, there's, there's, a, there's something called veto power in a marriage. And I don't, I don't hold it, Jimmy. Uh, my wife does, so you may, you may have to ask her that. She's not going to make the trip, but uh, uh, she she has the answer to that one. Uh, we'll jump back to Pat Rooney. Coach, unless something has changed, I believe they're allowing a few thousand fans into the arenas for their games. Uh, I guess what what layer does that add to the challenge? And on the other hand, are you guys maybe looking forward to that just a little bit because you're not gonna you're not gonna get that much if at all this season? Yeah, you know, Pat, I didn't even think about that, and I didn't, you know, I didn't. It was, wasn't even one of those questions that I even asked when we were talking about this game. I just, I didn't. I guess I assumed that they didn't have fans, but the fact that they do, I think, you know, from our players' perspective, is a positive thing. I think getting some human energy, you know, in that building will be great. Now. The one thing about Thompson Bowling Arena, you know, three or four thousand fans, that place is a big place. It holds 20,000 plus. So um, I don't think it'll be a formidable, you know, uh, home court for them, but it will be, you know, I'm sure those fans that do show up will be energetic and cheering for the Vols and it'll be a road atmosphere. There's no doubt about it. But um, something I didn't even think about, you know, until after we got the game scheduled and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm happy for the fans that are able to be let in that game. Uh, let's go to Neil Welk. Hey, Coach, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think you actually coached against Rick Barnes back when he was in uh, matchups. A lot of fun for you when you coach against a guy like that. Yeah, you know, I was mentioning to our staff the other day, I look at Rick Barnes' career, and I'm, 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 I'm really in awe. Um, he's been successful everywhere he's been. Uh, he's will, really well respected within the coaching community. I mean, you don't hear anybody say a, a negative word about Rick. He's got a great sense of humor, which I appreciate. I've gotten a chance to know him a little bit because we're both on the rules committee. And so over the last couple of years, I've gotten a chance to spend some time with him, you know, away from the court. And whether this year it's been on Zoom calls, but, you know, in meeting rooms in Indianapolis, I, I really appreciate him um, as, as, a, as a man, as a, a human being. And he's a hell of a basketball coach. And obviously he's proven that, you know, every place he's been. And, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, you never like to play against guys you, you, you consider a friend. But, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for both our teams and both our programs. Uh, we'll go back to Jimmy Hames and uh, finish it up with him. For those that haven't seen you play, Coach, tell us a little bit about your team, what you like, uh, and uh, what your, your strengths are. Well, Jimmy, it's really early uh, in the season to really know for sure the answer to that question. But I think, you know, the one thing I think in the two games we did play in Manhattan, Kansas, is our guys played hard and they competed. And I think I think uh, one thing I'd like to I'd like to think that Colorado basketball uh, would be known for is our toughness level and our, our the, the way we play and our intensity level. We've got a really, really good point guard uh, in McKinley Wright. We've got uh, some veteran leadership, Evan Batty, Dallas Walton along the front line. I think the front line matchup uh, in this game, we've got a good freshman in Jabari Walker, a grad transfer in Jariah Horn. Um, I think the front lines matchup in this game is going to be really interesting to watch. And then, you know, we're Sean Schwartz on the wing. We've got some – Max Daniels can shoot the ball. So we've, we've got some some good players. We're not probably as, as uh, highly regarded, obviously, nationally. Uh, as maybe some of the Tennessee players are. Again, the two McDonald's All-Americans they got. Victor Bailey, we're very familiar with from the transfer from Oregon because we, we competed against him for two years. He's a heck of a player. Um, and Fulkerson, what he does, and Pons. I mean, it's going to be a great matchup, I think. I really do. So, But I, our team hopefully will compete and you know, take great shots and be tough-minded defensively. And, and uh, we got, But we got our hands full because Tennessee's got some – they got some dudes, as they say. <laughs> 